Hello everyone. Today I thought I would talk about the Cuboxy 4 Pro. Um, it's by a company called Solid Run. So I'll just unbox it here real quick. Okay, there it is. Um, it actually has an infrared receiver transmitter depending on the version that you get. Um, and then on the left it has a PCM digital audio uh, uh, out for digital audio out and then it has a power connector gigabit Ethernet port HDMI 1.4 micro SD micro USB eSATA for like a hard drive and then two USB 2.0 ports this has the Freescale quad core processor um, so the performance is fantastic. It'll run 1080p, 60 frames a second, no problem. Um, I'm going to talk about installing OpenELEC from start to finish. So, is what we'll do is um, I will show you where the image is located, how to um, write it to an SD card, and then what to do after it's installed and plugged in for the first time. So here we go. Here we go. So right now we're on the OpenELEC website, and if you were at the Get OpenELEC and then Downloads, and then when you scroll down, you will see the Freescale IMX6 builds, and that's what you're going to put on the QE um, QE Boxy. So I this is actually the RC build or Cody version of OpenELEC, and this is the ARM image. And if you click that, is what it's going to do is it's going to give you um, actually two images so move these out of the way so it's going to give you the the GZ or gun zip compression uh, compressed image you're going to want to extract that whether how you do that whether it be WinRER or um, unarchiver or just using your Mac you can unzip it so once you unzip it uh, it's going to give you a real long name I suggest renaming it to just open.img and it's just going to be a little bit easier um, now, when we talk about the SD card, um, let me get the instructions here. So when we talk about setting up your SD card, the first thing that I always do uh, is list what, what specifically is on the card itself and what it looks like. Um, on this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about disk utility uh, on the Macintosh and just listing the disk, the disks on the, on the machine. So if I list them, uh, th you'll see quite a few disks on this machine. Um, but we're going to focus our attention on disk 3. Uh, that's the SD card, and you'll see there's multiple partitions. So the goal here is to clean the SD card as clean as possible, and I always suggest that. So um, I use uh, SD, SD Formatter, and it's by Samsung. Um, they have Windows and Macintosh versions. And when I, when I run through this, let me get it open for you. And when I run through this, the first thing that I do is actually just click the overwrite format. And it's going to detect the SD card, but make sure that you're on the right before you do that because you could overwrite your data. Um, but I'm going to actually overwrite format instead of the quick format to make sure everything is cleaned off. Um, and then when I do, when I do that, uh, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that because it will take a while for this video. Um, but if I was to set this up and get it functional... Uh, I suggest in overriding, um, you can choose a name if you want to. Uh, th that makes no difference as far as how functional it is. Uh, it'd be nice just to take the spaces out of everything, though. Or just call it, like, boot. And then go ahead and hit format, and it'll take a while, and then it'll, it'll get the system cleaned up. So after, after it's completely formatted and the SD card is completely clean, um, the next option that you're going to want to do... Um, is the disk mount uh, U-mount to make sure it's not mounted um, just all intents and purposes it's good to follow this rule um, now you'll see forward slash dev forward slash disk 4 S1 you'll need to make sure that you're on the correct um, you're the correct first partition or the second partition of the SD card it shouldn't they should all be cleaned off but you'll make sure that the, that it's not currently mounted so uh, my suggestion for, the, for this case, like I will unmount it right now, uh, and I'd, I would just say 3S1. 
and then I'd, I'd hit that. So uh, it actually said that no name on disk one, first partition was unmounted. So now at that point, um, I I'll move to the desktop because right now if I type PWD, I'm not in, uh, I'm in user Zeric, so I'm not in on the desktop. And if you have any questions about this, please leave a comment below. But I'm gonna go ahead and go into the desktop. And then that's just a folder. And then if I do LS, you'll see the two images. So you'll see what I downloaded, which was the gun kip, gun zip compressed image. And then you'll see open.img. So open.img is the one I renamed specifically just to duplicate onto the, the SD card. So um, now if you'll notice, I'm gonna I'm using an application or binary that's already installed on the Macintosh. It's called uh, DD. So you have it available for Linux, you also have it available for Mac. On the Windows side, uh, there are tons of utilities to put an IMG file uh, on an SD card. So I, I will put one down in the description just in case you don't have one. So in, in all intents and purposes, if I run this command, um, it's going to elevate the privileges using sudo, write the open.img file because we're on the desktop uh, uh, to notice forward slash dev forward slash rdisk3 which is not a partition so you're not going to partition the um, the SD card you, you don't format it to set it up anyway you're actually going to put the image on to the SD card so I'm just going to hit enter prompt me for a password and it takes just a few minutes um, so after while well, that's writing um, we'll talk about the supported uh, media codecs for the processor so it's writing to the SD card so one of the things about OpenELEC and, and the QE box from Solid Run is you'd want to focus your attention on the hardware decoding and the reason why I suggest that is because you'll get a lot of better performance out of a hardware support decoding if you encode your media that you want to stream to this device with um, with this, uh, it, so for instance, if you um, if it supports H two or H dot two six four and H two six three, that's what you'd want to encode to. That way, um, you get a better response. So anyway, so moving back to um, to our image, it looked like it finished. So I'll um, minimize this, and it's it wrote the the information to the SD card and it's ready to go so before we eject it though uh, you'll see mine says no name and it's actually mounted right here so you want to make sure that you right click and eject it at least from the Macintosh most operating systems um, given the uh, fidelity of a SD card you'll make sure that you eject it before pulling it out especially uh, for something that's going to run on a on a platform with just an SD card my suggestion is always format always eject it before um, giving it to its device so I'll go ahead and eject it now and um, from this point on we're gonna go ahead and go to a monitor externally and I will show you the features of Kodi and uh, how to set that up at the console on on um, open elect Cuboxy first boot it's gonna resize partitions and restart and right now I just have the HDMI the Ethernet and just a mouse connected I just have a mouse for the pointer for right now so open elect version 4.97.2 the Kodi and this is actually the RC release. Okay. If you'll notice, it was extremely fast on this device. <clears throat> and now I'll just use the mouse here. So it's going to update all of the plugins associated with it. And I'm, I'm going to set my language and I'm going to click next. And then host name. So if you wanted to change your host name from Open Elect to something else, right there is what you change the name of your uh, device itself. So and then we'll click next. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it the default. And then um, here, 
it talks about if you'd want to do wired or wireless. So here I'm doing wired and the state is ready. And there's the IP address. Now I have this DHCP so um, it'll follow name resolution. I'll have to use name resolution if I don't statically assign this. Um, my suggestion to you is, is that if you have DHCP at home go ahead and just leave it DHCP that way uh, you're not trying to manage it yourself. Um, and then uh, we'll just go ahead and click next. There's nothing that you have to do here. And now these two buttons here. So SSH um, if you're not familiar with SSH, you may want to become familiar. And the reason why I say that is because this will allow you to do a lot of functionality with the device to log into a terminal. Um, you can do it from Windows, Macintosh, or Linux. Um, I enable both of these. Um, this one is Samba, which is um, uh, it's Windows file sharing. It allows you to. Uh, it's an application that's installed uh, that allows you to do Windows file sharing. I actually check both of these and you'll see that there's a working icon down here at the bottom and it's installing uh, setting up the RSA or DSA keys it's nothing that you have to do other than check these two boxes so uh, without this your box wouldn't be able to see Malek so we'll just go ahead and move forward and it's all set up so the first thing that I like to do is go to system and then system information and I just look at the settings just to see how things are operating just to make sure everything's in, in good health. Uh, you'll see it's running Linux 3.14.25 kernel. Um, you'll see the IP address inside here, the MAC address. Then storage, you'll see that, that there is two, two partitions. And then video. Here it's just running at a low 33 frames per second and you, you can see that jump up and down depending on what you're doing. And then um, here we go, Freescale IMX6 quad dual light uh, device tree. So the CPU temperature is at 88 degrees Fahrenheit which is nice. So if you want to get out of here just close it at the top. Um, if you want to set up shares or anything like that um, you, for instance, a good example is, is if I wanted to set up share, I, a share to browse to my videos. If I didn't have a hard drive uh, directly connected to eSATA, I would just click um, Files, and then it gives you a prompt, and you just say OK, and it's trying to give you some assistance. And I would do Add Videos, and then Browse, and then at this point, this is where you set your your protocol. So. Um, Windows or Samba SMB network that's for the general um, population that's what you would use if you click Windows and then it's going to display your work group on your network and these are the devices on my network right now that it sees and then you just us uh, you like this to say I'll add a particular here and then I'd say username and I'd add my username and password and then I could have video so anyway, uh, that's the start to finish. Um, I may do another video just uh, that talks about implementing an infrared receiver uh, or transmitter.